welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha! Welcome back to the Do A Heartily channel. We are on day 222. I am so excited to be back. I hope that you're glad to be back. Before we jump into God's Word, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us every single day. I pray that we continue to grow in our relationship with you, that we seek you out every single day day, that we meditate upon your word, that we resist the devil and his temptations, and again, Lord, that we grow in our relationship with you. I pray that you would speak through me this hour, that whoever's out there watching, that their hearts would be tender, minds would be focused, and I pray that you would speak through me this hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, Miss Kathleen and I had a wonderful time in Oregon. Miss Kathleen got to see snow for the very first time. We got to have some snowball fights. We built snowmen. We rode bikes, we hiked up Smith Rock, we presented our ministry, we talked about you guys to a bunch of different people at Pioneer Baptist Church in Oregon. And so overall, we had a great, great, great time. Now, right there at the end of the trip though, we were at an airport. We had flown from Oregon to Seattle, and then we were supposed to fly from Seattle to Oahu and right there at the end of the trip we had a four hour delay we were supposed to get on the plane fly back to Oahu and be back home by 7 o'clock p.m. but we didn't get home until 1 o'clock a.m. and whoo waiting at their airport was rough and so it, it got me to thinking you know a lot of people ask this question this day, today and, and they've asked it before why do bad things happen to good people? Now, I'm not saying that a four-hour delay was necessarily a bad thing. It was more of an inconvenience. But that situation caused me to think about that question. Why do bad things happen to good people? And oftentimes, you might have that question. You may even ask it today. You may even ask it in the future. And uh, there was another question that I asked Pastor Edwin Lugo and his wife, and I've asked this to my wife, I've asked this to other friends, especially us being in Hawaii and us being so close to the ocean. I asked this question, and it's also a question you saw at the beginning. If you were to swim in the ocean and a shark bit you and you lived, would you ever get back in the ocean? Now, me personally, I am definitely more of a swimming pool person. I, yes, I'll get into the ocean, I'll go to the beach, but if I were to ever get in the ocean and a shark bit my leg or bit my arm or bit some part of me, but I live through the whole ordeal, I'm 99% sure that I would never get back in the ocean again. I just don't have a love for the ocean. Do I enjoy swimming? Yes but I enjoy it in a swimming pool. There's no snakes, there's no alligators, there's no sharks, there's nothing in the swimming pool that can attack me or kill me. So I much prefer, uh, I prefer the swimming pool over the ocean. But when I asked Pastor Edwin this, he said he would get back in the ocean. Now I've asked a lot of people this question and it's usually half and half. A lot of people say, yeah, I would get back in the ocean. A lot of people say, no, I would never get back in the ocean. But it depends on your love for the ocean. That's really what it depends on. Do you would you rather get in the ocean over anything else? And a lot of people have that affection. They have that love, like Bethany Hamilton. Some of you out there may have heard of Bethany Hamilton. October twenty first. Uh, excuse me. October thirty first in the year two thousand three. At age 13, Bethany Hamilton was surfing on the island of Kauai. And then all of a sudden, a 14-foot-long tiger shark bit her left arm off. And I'm not just talking about, like, bit a chunk out of her arm. I'm not trying to be gross with this or anything like this. I'm trying, just trying to give you the facts. But what happened was it got all the way up to her shoulder and took it off. Thankfully, 
she lived. But listen to this. I told you a minute ago, it was October 31st, 2003. November 26th, 2003. 26 days after the attack, she was back in the ocean learning to surf with one arm. Bethany Hamilton had a love and still has a love for the ocean and the sport of surfing and her love for the ocean and surfing was so strong that it overwhelmed any type of fear and any type of tragedy or trauma. She was willing to go back in. Why? Because she had a relationship. She had a love for that sport and for the ocean. She wasn't going to let something bad that happened to her ruin that love that she has. Oftentimes Christians do that though. Something bad happens in our life and it ruins the relationship that we have with God. Now it doesn't ruin it on the side of God. God doesn't look at it and go, man, that was really bad on them. I don't want a relationship with anymore. Nope. It ruins it on our side. We say, man, why did God let that happen to me? I'm such a good person. Why did this bad thing happen? Well, I want to show you something. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of John, chapter number 16, verse 33. This is one of Bethany Hamilton's favorite verses. We're only going to look at two verses today. John, chapter 16, verse number 33. It says, These things I have spoken unto you. This is Jesus talking. We know that. It's in red. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Notice it says, In the world ye shall have tribulation. Tribulation means trouble. Trouble. And it says, Ye shall have. That means you will not live your life without trouble coming your way. There is going to be some sort of trouble. There is going to be some sort of tragedy. That means bad days will happen. But it's how you react to those bad days. Notice what it, how it ends. It says, but be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Jesus says, trouble's coming from the world. But be of good cheer. Don't worry. I have overcome the world. Not only did Bethany Hamilton's love for the ocean and love for the sport of surfing not be shook or she didn't, she didn't even blink, she didn't think twice about it, her relationship with God was also strengthened by it. She is uh, a Christian. She proclaims to be a Christian. I don't know. I, I can't see her heart. I don't know how strong her relationship with, is, is with God or uh, if we agree 100% with everything the Bible says. I don't know. I don't know Bethany Hamilton personally. But what I do know of her and the testimony that I've read about her is that her arm being bitten off actually led to a stronger relationship with God. It led to her uh, going around to other foreign countries and sharing her testimony and sharing her testimony here and in America and all over the place. And it led to other people accepting Christ and following God as their personal Savior. And so that leads me to the second verse. It says, Romans 8.28, if you can turn there, Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Notice it says, we know that all things work together for good. Even her arm being taken is something that is potentially going to work for good, but it's what Bethany did with it. That was the terrible thing that happened. Like, oh no, I lost my arm. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use it to honor God. We can have a bad day and it can still honor God. We can have a tragedy in our life. We can have a bad thing happen to us and we can turn around and use it to honor the one true God. So, are bad days going to come? Yes. Oh no. But... Be of good cheer. Why? Because Jesus has already overcome the world. We can already have victory in him, but we have to choose how we react that day. Are you going to react like Bethany Hamilton? And no matter what happens, you're still going to love God. 
and you're going to have that love. You're not going to have that fear uh, of what might happen in the ocean of life, right? I, I'll be honest. If I get attacked by a shark, I'm not going back in the ocean. But if I get attacked by a shark and I live, you know where I'll be on Sunday? I'll still be in church. You know where I'll be the next day? I'll still be in God's Word. Unless, you know, I'm knocked out in the hospital, right? <laughs> Physically, I wouldn't be able to do it. But as soon as I wake up, I'll still be worshiping God. Because no matter what tragedy comes my way, I want to show that I love God and, want, and I want my relationship with Him to grow stronger. Do you want the same? Work on your relationship with God today. Your questions were at the beginning. We love you. God loves you even more. And aloha.